There is no one dumber than a person trying to get rich by making music. Clutch his pearls. <laughs> Kenny Beats, producer, for those of y'all who don't don't know, who has a successful career. These are his words. Apparently, allegedly, he jokingly or unjokingly said that he was hacked up under this post. But uh, we're going to break down exactly <laughs> what he said, like and how he expanded on that. But to me, that's a shot at the whole music industry. Yeah. Because... If someone, if you say there's no one dumber than a person trying to get rich by making music, there should. Well, what do you call the person who is also trying to make money by helping somebody make music? Man, that's a good point, man. I didn't think about that. I'm just saying, there's a lot of indirect, you know, what I mean, casualties going on there, friendly fires perhaps. But Kenny B said, "I've been making music as a job since I was 16 years old, and I'm in my 30s. I can support myself and my family comfortably." Yes. I'm telling you as a multi-platinum, multi-Grammy nominated producer that getting rich off music only in 2024 is impossible without many other sources of income. I'm not lying to you to hate on you. It's a warning that you should be in it for the love. So keep this in mind. I like that he flipped it in a direction though. So just have your priorities in order because, hey man, if you don't love this, there's so many better ways to make money. So once you like die, like bring it back to that, it's hard for me to disagree because one, like he's he has more that he said by the way, y'all. But one, getting rich, we're talking about getting rich. Mm -hmm. I think we got to define what do we mean, we mean by getting rich because a lot of people will say, oh, I can make plenty of money. I'm making a hundred k a year. It's like, oh, that's not rich. Maybe in his opinion, maybe two million dollars isn't rich in his his opinion. All right. So some people might say, well, I can make enough money. That makes sense for me and i'm good mm -hmm. cool uh, i think there is a real conversation like even if you are making 100k 200k a year as an artist projecting that out times 10 years starts to look a little different right start to, as every artist has their their peak curve in terms of how much you're selling and then it goes down like let's say your peak is 100k all right and you're doing that year over year for three years or what does that look like in seven years? Are you do you have enough money to start to save and be able to flip it into something else? Like as things slow down, or how you maintain? That's something to really think about. Most art people don't talk about that. Uh, so even even if you're indie, but that's why you said just off of music, right? So that's that's point number one. He's talking about getting rich off of the music, but then also being in it for the love implies yes, I could be doing something else, right? If you're not doing it for the love. And um, then why are you doing this? Because everybody in this music industry, not everybody, there's a lot of people, a lot of people outside of artists that are in this industry for the love. Because a lot of people could be making money other elsewhere too. So many other places. And artists don't give enough people credit for that because you hear about these institutions, these faceless institutions of, of labels and things like that. But there are a lot of people and talent that could be shooting call centers making more money than they're making in music dealing with all the stuff that they're dealing with with artists so it's 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 something that people should soak in but <laughs> <laughs> kenny said we're talking about 2024 not all the rich artists you can remember in the past people make music today people making music today and i get what he's saying now because we know in the 90s even early 2000s like the money the bank selling off of cds Artists are making crazy money. So he's like, make sure you're looking at the right people. I'm talking about making money in music when you need to have more than a trillion streams to make $10 million. Deals are structured against your favor in every single way. I feel like that that's not a new thing, to be fair. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there's 100,000 songs a day uploaded to Spotify. You should try because you care about what you are making, in my opinion, not try because of the potential profit, which are way smaller than people assume again mm -hmm. why are you in this art thing if it's just for the money make way for the people who actually care about the art because it's going to be hard to get to the money regardless having all y'all people who flood the flood the opportunity to make money that are in it just for the money even though it's not a great money opportunity bro y'all messing up for everybody yeah but it's not the lick that you thought it was it's, it's not the lick <laughs> man it's not the lick Every situation is different, but in general, he gives you a little breakdown. The, that first million that you make, 
take out 15% for management. Mm. All right. That's 150K. Take out 5% for your lawyer. That's a 50K. So now we had 200K. Take 5% for a business manager. Now we're at 250K. 30 to 40% taxes, possibly 10% for an agent. So let's get up to 350K if we're talking about everybody except for the taxes. Now we're talking about the taxes. The taxes that would be after you paid those people for your team. Like 650. So. 60, 650, 130, yep. so 195 to like two something. There we go. Yeah. So best about right at half a million. Yeah. Right you got about half a million left, 400 to, to half a million left. All right. Then he goes on to say, you might be left with a down payment for a crib if you spent zero other money. Which, come on. Yeah. You know, there's some <laughs> more money coming out of that. Like, that's just paying people, not maintaining your life. And other things. Eight, yeah, in this example. Exactly. And we're not even talking <laughs> about funding your business in this example either. Oh, uh, yeah, true. Yeah. Like, we're not even yeah. talking about paying for tour stuff or whatever you're talking about. Okay, yeah, 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 we're, not, we're talk not talking about any of that. So that $10 million came from mostly brand deals, shows, other things besides music, if I had to guess. If you got to that number. All right. So the first mill, I guess he's saying, would just be music, if any, in that case. Mm -hmm. If you made 10 million, you got most of it from stuff outside of just the music. The point is, do music you love. This the worst get rich quick scheme in the universe. Thanks. I love it. I love it. Do the music you love. Because if you're doing it for the money, boy, you ain't smart anyway. And I remember, I can't remember who said it, bro, but I've heard somebody saying, like, if you want to make money quick, you go pick up a brick before you pick up a microphone, bro, because it ain't enough. It's the way of the world, man. Like, <laughs> Are we talking about the bricks I'm thinking you talking about? Probably, yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> he said probably yeah, you eat. those exact type of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Was the weight of the world a pun or just a, a, a mistake? No, no, no. I think I think it was intentional, yeah. I love it. Like, you know, the weight of the world will move more than the weight of the artistic decision sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, sometimes. <laughs> most times. <laughs> <laughs> Check out this second clip, though, while we're on the topic of money by Alex Ohanian, um, one of the co-founders of Reddit, a.k.a. Serena's husband. Seeing Pharrell launch a full album exclusively through his website and not on any streaming platforms. This was a pleasant surprise. It reminds me of when Radiohead did this. And it was like a pay what you want. Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails, had a similar album approach. There is... First, what I love about this clip is he's saying this reminds me. This whole direct-to-fan strategy that you're doing right here for real, which is dope. It reminds me of when X, Y, and Z did this. This has happened before. Mm -hmm. Pay what you want. This has happened before. Uh, all these things have happened before. Again, they're more popular now. We're making it making it a trend. But the question is, how real is this? Is this a trend? Or is this an inflection point where things change for real? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think... I th as, as messed up as it sounds, I still think it's, it's kind of a train. Why? Because I think that, I think that before it realistically becomes implemented in the artist's brain that it's something they should be doing and, and building towards, it's gonna take probably another two to three like big acts to do it. Like Pharrell's a good start. Um, you know, smaller levels, you got like the LaRussells and things, but I think it's gonna take like two, three more of the Pharrell level, and Pharrell wasn't as vocal about it. Like, it's not like Pharrell's running around. I didn't even know he did that to us while Alex talked about it. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's not like he's running around doing this huge PR campaign or talking about it crazy. So you're gonna need more of that. And then two, just the industry slow, bro. I mean, I think about like Facebook ads, you know? I think about when we started pushing Facebook ads, 2018, 2019, to the point to where it became cemented enough in artist's brain that it was like a standard thing to do, which I would argue is probably around like 2022, you know what I'm saying? Like 2022, and then even thinking about that, when we started pushing it, it wasn't even new. Like it wasn't even like, you know, when you started making videos, like that's when Facebook guys, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah, popped yeah. up. It was oh. around three, four years, maybe longer than that before even yep. we came out. So the industry is slow, artist mentality is slow. They need 
a lot of good North Stars before they in mass start implementing it. And then usually by the, that, the time that happens, you're like a good four to five years at least past the point where it was trendy. So I do think it can build into being a cemented thing, but right now, yeah, I think it's trendy. Artists, managers, there is no way you should ever do a regular pre-save campaign again because Forever Fan has Forever Saves where a fan could pre-save your music one time and then automatically pre-save every song you ever release after that. That's right, forever. And on top of that, Forever Fan has email and texting all in one platform. This is built out for artists who don't have huge teams and don't want to get overwhelmed doing too many things in too many different places. So go to foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, that's no labels with an S, and put in the code no labels 2 to get access and try it out for only a dollar. Forever Fan is your go-to place for your marketing needs as an artist so you can stay organized, have your own infrastructure to make it a lot easier to go to the next level. Again, that's foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels and type in the code no labels 2 at checkout to get access for only a dollar. Now back to the episode. What's most important is understanding that the principle is correct. We are principally correct that, you know, people should have more of a direct relationship Mm-hmm. Our artists have more of a direct relationship with their fan base, just like any other business wants to have more of a direct relationship with their customers. That's just principle of business. Yeah. All right. It has nothing to do with, oh, we feel sorry for the artists. It has nothing to do with any woe is me story or victimization story. It's just the reality that like good business, all right, and putting yourself in the best position of leverage looks like that. And artists, as people who are stewards of their business, and we started to think more so of them like that. That is correct. Whether it's a trend or not, or whether it's popular or not, like that is something that should be done. Mm-hmm. I think trend wise, we are directionally correct as well. So principle, that's not gonna change that that's right, no matter what time period we're in. And then direction, I think directionally we're correct. I think we're heading in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Right? Agree. Uh, agree. Even if it doesn't, even if, if it doesn't become the masses in terms of artists who like go all the way in, like, oh, I got the super sales funnels and I'm super direct with my fans and I'm doing group, uh, like online groups and I'm doing uh, pop ups and I'm like doing side shows and I, you know, like I'm doing tournaments and every, like, all right, you'll have the people who do like literally everything, you know, pay what you want. And like a uh, uh, vinyl, they will literally do everything. And then you have some artists who do less of that, right? And then you have some artists, probably even more artists, who don't do like most of that, mm-hmm. but they have the few things that they do and they do them well, and it's good enough for them because they are more concerned about still being an artist versus maximizing revenue, even in into that degree in that way, right? Yeah. So, but. Like once you tip the scale on the seesaw, all right, we were in the right direction, and it's okay to have that right proport that that um, move that proportion around. Like it's better that it's like most people are screwed over, or and then there are some small amount of people that are like doing things on an independent fan direct scale. You can either have that, or you can have just a decent amount of people who are doing things. You know, fan, fan uh, direct to fan, and having this super indie route, but then you'll also have more artists in the middle that, again, they're at least not getting screwed over completely. That's what I what, what I think. Yeah, not nah, it's, it's like you said. I think the the sentiment is is good. It's a good skill to practice because I mean, even in what we're kind of saying, you know. If you're an artist today that can't necessarily do these strategies now, even taking the steps to learn how to implement it and then going through the, the motions will be good for you because it's something that is probably isn't going away. You know, like I mean, like he said, like it's been around long before we were here. Um, now it's becoming a lot more popularized because we're seeing more artists we like actually do it. Which, which, to like I said, if you're a small artist listening to this. That would tell me like, hey, I got like three to five years at least to go ahead and sharpen this stick. You know what I'm saying? Because um, that's the 
the beautiful thing about music is if you are early to something, you have a, a beautiful potential to, to cap on something in a way that other people never will. And I think that's a stage of things that we're in now. But music is slow, bro. So what feels like it's came and gone, you know, sometimes within a, a year or two, a couple months, whatever that may be, those are really just the initial seeds that, that are being planted to for the tree that's going to inevitably sprout and, and, and then stand, you know what I'm saying, for however long it stands. And so I think we're at the early point of, of direct to consumer relationships. You know, I was arguing between like 20, probably since the pandemic into now, I was, it's pretty much been like the the groundwork being laid and it's not going anywhere, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. build up the muscle, get to work. <laughs> I agree. But that's all right. I'm Brand Man Sean. <laughs> I'm Corey. Here we up. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.